So going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the, the difficult road we have ahead over the next couple of months in terms of um, the kinetics of the, the epidemic and then uh, where the, the vaccine uh, data from yesterday, I think, gives us some hope. So uh, overall, as you can see, we're, we're at record numbers, obviously uh, exceeding 200,000 cases a day, and that is probably going to continue going up nationwide. We also have uh, increasing numbers of hospitalizations, over 100,000 uh, per day consistently now, and uh, our death curve, as expected, about a, a month lagging behind the case curve, is now in full upswing, and, and we're exceeding 3,000 deaths a day, and, and that is uh, going to continue as well. Uh, in Nebraska, we've uh, we've done a little better over the past uh, three weeks or so. We've had a, a definite downtick in cases, um, but I, I think, you know, in, in reality, what we've seen over the last 10 days or so really since the Thanksgiving holiday is, is really a plateau. We are not going down. Um, this is evident looking at percent positives as well that we're, we're testing less frequently. Our test uh, overall test numbers per day have been down and our test percentage uh, positive has gone up uh, depending on who's counting. Um, that can be anywhere from uh, 22% or so to about 14 uh, and a half percent uh, positives, uh, but uh, in every metric, uh, that uh, percent positive is going up. I, I'd love to be able to synchronize the state's data and data from local health departments, but uh, we're still unable to get a breakdown of how the state counts. Um, so, you know, that's a shocking lack of transparency in a public health emergency, but, but there we go. Uh, what we know from the, the prospect of the next couple of months is what these trends tell us what we can uh, what we can take away from previous experience. And then uh, the CDC has updated their uh, modeling recently. So they have uh, pulled together uh, 11 uh, of the most um, uh, trusted and skilled infectious disease modeling uh, teams in the country to create this, uh, this ensemble that gives you uh, something pretty similar to the hurricane cone forecast. So they take all the models and they mash them together what the CDC Ensemble Modeling Group says for the next two month or so uh, between now and the 4th of January, as you can see, uh, per week, we're averaging about one point, or this past week, we had about 1.48 million cases. Uh, and what they project uh, for uh, a month from now, a little less, is uh, anywhere between 1 and 2.3 million with a mean projection of about 1.7 um, per 1.7 million per week. So uh, increasing, uh, you know, by uh, more than uh, 10, 15 percent uh, over the next month. What that looks like for uh, hospitalizations, as you can see, is, uh, is also a significant increase. Um, right now, we're averaging about 13 and a half new hospitalizations a day. And you can see the range is pretty wide there from 9 to 29,000. But as you can see from this uh, aggregate of all of the the different um, uh, all of the different models. The the mean there is about 18 and a half, so 37 uh, percent increase in hospitalizations, which is a pretty significant strain on a national health system that's already buckling under the the weight of what we have now. And from deaths, you can see that uh, depending on who's counting, again, this is CDC count. We're at about 289,000 total deaths, and they're projecting uh, at least the the mean. Uh, projection of their models uh, has us at about 346,000 deaths by the beginning of January, so a 20% increase. So pretty, um, you know, pretty ugly statistics. And again, January isn't really looking that much better uh, because we don't expect that the vaccine will really have much effect on the kinetics of the epidemic until uh, much later. But the good news, the ecstasy that we have is the, the data that's come out from Pfizer and that was presented to the FDA yesterday that was relieved and that released in their briefing information on Tuesday uh, and doing uh, a bit of a deep dive into that, the, the data look really remarkably good. So again, this is an uh, mRNA vaccine that's going to be given in two doses, 21 days apart. Uh, these doses are packaged in five dose uh, vials uh, that are required to stay frozen at ultra cold temperatures uh, and will be distributed as soon as the EUA is issued. Uh, and that may be as early as today, or I think most people think as late as Monday or Tuesday. Uh, what this clinical trial data showed is, is remarkable efficacy, and you can see it's a, a large phase two, three clinical trial with almost uh, 44,000 participants, 
Uh, and you can see that that's a pretty wide breakdown of folks, including 41% of folks over the age of 55. So in people who are higher risk and potentially in, in, in many instances have lower vaccine uh, immunogenicity. Uh, you can also see a good representation of different ethnic backgrounds uh, and uh, an even split between male and female. Uh, safety data first, which is I think uh, concerning for a lot of folks and the safety data look uh, pretty reassuring. Uh, so the most common reactions that were found were local uh, reactions within the first seven days, pain at the injection site and some redness. And you can see here, um, you know, relatively similar from dose one to dose two and uh, relatively similar from age groups, although people over the age of 55 had slightly uh, lower rates of local site reactions. And then systemic reactions, relatively common uh, after vaccination. This is again after dose two, which had slightly more uh, common uh, systemic reactions associated with it. But they are, uh, you know, generally what you would expect with uh, an immunogenic vaccine: some fatigue, some headaches, some chills, muscle pain, and joint pain. Uh, most of which you can see was relatively mild. And again, you know, if you look at the placebo uh, arm, 23% of placebo recipients. Were, experienced or complained of fatigue after vaccination too. So uh, certainly a higher rate among the, the vaccine doses, but not out of proportion to what we've seen with other vaccines. Um, and what we see is these, uh, these responses are relatively soon after vaccination, one or two days later, and they last only one or two days. So they're pretty short lived. Severe adverse events that uh, were recorded uh, among these 43,000 participants, really minimal. And again, no difference between uh, what we've seen in the vaccine arm and the placebo arm, which is incredibly reassuring. So the safety data so far with an average of two months follow-up for these folks looks uh, really, really good. Efficacy data looks even better. Uh, and what they did is look for a primary endpoint of evidence of uh, COVID infection. So that was a symptom plus a positive PCR. And what they found was 95% vaccine efficacy measured uh, seven days after dose two. Uh, and so you can see in the placebo arm, they had 162 infections out of about 18,000 uh, volunteers. And in the vaccine arm, they had only eight infections. So again, a vaccine efficacy rate of 95%, which is uh, just unbelievably high. And the other good thing is looking across demographic spectra, that vaccine efficacy uh, was retained even in older populations over the age of 75 uh, and across all ethnic and, and demographic uh, strata. So that's really, really good news. Um, if you look at the protection against severe disease, the data is just as reassuring and, and just as remarkable. So you can see from severe uh, disease um, after uh, seven days after dose two, uh, there were no cases of severe disease in the vaccine arm and five in the placebo arm. And if you look just after day or after the first dose, there was one case of severe disease after the first dose of the vaccine uh, in the vaccine arm and 14 cases in the placebo arm. So again, looks as if it not only protects you against symptomatic disease, but also significantly protects you against uh, severe disease. And this is the most remarkable piece of data, I think, overall. This is kind of the reverse Kaplan-Meier curve. So it shows how many people got infected, uh, you know, uh, over the course of time after the first dose. So day zero is dose one. So you don't even get your second dose of vaccine until, until day 21 here. But what you can see is these curves dramatically depart from each other at about day 14. So what this means is that by day 14 after the first dose, uh, they saw significant immunity in the people who received the vaccine. And you can see that's basically a flat line from day 14 on. So 14 days after you got the first dose, you were essentially protected from, uh, from infection. That's incredible news. Um, it means that we may not need the second dose. The second dose may be uh, important in giving you long lasting immunity. So it may affect the durability, but it doesn't seem to affect, you know, the immediate immunogenicity or protective uh, factor of the vaccine. So great news, a, a remarkably uh, effective vaccine from what we can see in the data that was presented. And also from, again, the first 44,000 participants looks like it's, uh, or 22,000 that were vaccinated, looks like it has a safety profile uh, similar to, you know, uh, many other vaccines that we use. Um, and, and so I, I think that's remarkable news. And, and uh, we're going to be rolling that vaccine out to healthcare workers here 
within the next few days. So uh, that is uh, that is good news. So that's all I got. Thanks.